do we know that the laws of the physics have uh, the laws of physics have always been the same? Like when we look back at the Big Bang, like in that instant, were the laws of physics the same as they are now? That's a great question. And you might think we're all just assuming it without testing it. But there is a tiny but very real and very committed cottage industry of people where physicists where all they do is check for the stability of the laws of physics and checking to see if everything is happening the way we all have come to expect it to happen or, and to take place. So, for example, there are people who wonder whether the law of gravity changes slightly in the exact alignment of the sun, moon, and earth, which would be mid-total solar eclipse or mid-lunar eclipse. When that happens, all three are exactly aligned. And they're wondering, because there are not many occasions to measure it in that exact moment. You gotta be there for the eclipse and you need the equipment and you gotta be like asking the right questions about it. And so, so I'm glad these people are there. Now, it turns out, okay, if I can give it, I know this should be conversational, but I have a slightly long story I want to share with you, okay? So I'm not going to stop you. Go right ahead. <laughs> Isaac Newton comes up with his laws of gravity, okay, 1687. Brilliant work of genius, all right? And he, he's got the formula, and he says, this is, and you plug it in, and this is the moon going around the earth, the earth going around the sun, the, the, planet, the planets going around the sun. He's got this. Not only that, it worked for the moons of Jupiter orbiting Jupiter, right? So he didn't start out saying, let me try to figure that out. He just, he found out a, what came to be known as a universal law of gravitation. And in astrophysics, when we use the word universe, we really mean universe. Unlike on Earth, when they call, call something a universal joint or, or Miss Universe. No, that's Miss Earth, okay? That's an Earth joint. That's an Earth thing, all right? So or Mr. Universe as Mr. Earth. So this applied out to Jupiter and even to Saturn. But then uh, William Herschel accidentally discovered another planet orbiting beyond Saturn, all right? It ultimately came to be known as Uranus. All right, it's a quick thing. And, and when you say Uranus, that is the correct pronunciation? Yes, unless you're eight years old, yes, it's the correct pronunciation. <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uranus, yes. And so, by the way, just a little... Wait, just, Neil, side... just a quick question. What's the other pronunciation? I don't know which one, in case people don't know what it is. Yes, we're not talking about my, my anus. We're talking about Uranus, right. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> so, um, so, what happened... So, by the way, no one had ever discovered a planet before. All the known planets have been known since the ancient times. So, this was weird, because how could there be another thing out there? And he discovers it, and he... he he, he didn't know what he should name it, right? And this is what I'm about to say is irrelevant to the story that I'm going to pick up in a minute. But how, what do you name? If no one has discovered one before, so he named it after his principal benefactor, who was King George. This is the same King George of the American Revolution, King George. So uh, to whom the Declaration of Independence was addressed. And so implicitly, if not explicitly. Anyhow, so that meant for a period of time, and I have books that detail this, for a period of time, the enumeration of planets in order from the sun was Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and George. That's, <laughs> that's how that was. Okay, so now we're looking at the orbit. You got to wait a little while, get enough sort of data, and you say, oh, Uranus is not following Newton's laws of gravity. Oh my gosh, have we found the limits? This is back to your question about the Big Bang. Uh, uh, that's a time question, but this is a distance question. Have we found the limits of Newton's gravity? Maybe it only applies out to Saturn, and when you're out among the stars and beyond, maybe another law applies. This is how fresh we were thinking with whether physics was an ultimate understanding of reality or not. So, so people said, you know, Newton is a brilliant guy, and I'd like his theory is nice and tidy, and it's worked everywhere we've seen it, rather than assume his theory is failing, let's do something else. Let us propose that there's another source of gravity out there yet to be discovered that's tugging on Uranus. And 
giving the illusion that Newton's laws are failing. So a bunch of people got together, observers and mathematicians, they got together and it's a very difficult problem. It's an inversion problem. It's not, I have this object, what's the strength of gravity at this distance? It's, I have this place in space how much gravity do I need there and where would the object have to be to create this effect? That's a, it's an inversion problem, very difficult mathematics then and now. It's a difficult problem to solve. They solved it. And they said, look, in this part of the sky, if Newton's laws are correct, there should be another planet right there. Bada bing. That night, they turned the telescope and they found another planet. And thus was the discovery of Neptune. Point is, um, and this continued out to binary stars, binary galaxies. Wait a second, Neil. Is there is there any planets outside of Neptune you'd like to bring up? No, no. The the known universe ends at Neptune. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> There's stuff out there. Frozen icy balls of yeah, uh, dirty dirty ice balls. Yes, and they have names. Some of them. Okay. You're saying directly <laughs> directly outside the orbit of, uh, of Uranus. There's dirty ice. By balls. the way, I. We, I buried the hatchet with Pluto long ago. I'm, me and Pluto go way back, and Pluto can handle it, even if some other people among us can't. Okay. So, by the way, every now and then in my Twitter stream, it's on some other topic, and somebody's got to jump in and say, you were mean to Pluto. It's like, get over it, okay? <laughs> it's, time, it's time to move on, okay? <laughs> Moveon.org, okay? Just move on. Um, so, where was I? So, my point is, We've been testing the extents of the laws of physics that we measure here on Earth ever since there have been laws of physics. And fortunately, we do have a time dimension here, just the way the geologist looks at sediments of rocks, and they know that one sediment that formed later than the other is going to be above the other unless there's some kind of subduction or some change in the terrain. You, you have a timeline that goes straight through all the sediments. That's how we know when the dinosaurs were and when they went extinct and when, when mammals rose and all of this. We have the same principle in the universe because as you look out, you see things not as they are, but as they once were because it takes light time to reach us. So you see the moon as it was one and a half seconds ago. You so is there the someone in, is there someone like one light year away that could see all of us before we gained all of our COVID weight? Yes, correct. Yes, the, the COVID pregnancies and, 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 and COVID bellies are all uh, pre <laughs> one light year away. There, there are no known stars one light year away. Um, the closest one is like is um, Alpha Centauri system. That's four light years away. So that one would be seeing Trump just ascending to presidency. And they would be seeing the, the Women's March and the Science March right around now. OK, that would just be reaching them now. So they're looking into the past of their universe, which is four years ago for us, as we would be seeing their past. For, for what I like thinking about is there's a galaxy. I forgot which what its phone number is. It might be M100. But there's a galaxy that's about 65 million light years away. They're only right now seeing the asteroid take out the dinosaurs. It's just now arriving. Point is, we're here in our galaxy on Earth, and we look out to the outer reaches of the universe, and we see the same laws of physics manifest. And no, we don't see moons orbiting planets, but you, we have spectra. We can take the light that it's coming from stars, and in that light is the chemical compositions of the glowing gases that are making that, that, um, that spectrum. The carbon, the oxygen, the nitrogen, and those spectral features are like a fingerprint. They're unique to the, all the elements on the periodic table and the state of the elements. An ionized element has different lines, different spectral features than a non-ionized element. Okay, So we know how hot it is, what elements are there, in what ratios, and we look out to the farthest reaches of the universe and the spectral features are identical. Which means that atomic structures and the laws of physics that operate inside the atom, the quantum physics, the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, all of those from the earliest moments we could possibly measure in the universe match what we get in the laboratory. So not only are the laws of physics constant throughout time, 
they're also constant across space. And if that were not the case, I don't even know if we would have such a thing as science. Because science has its foundations on the fact that I can figure out what's going on over there by, by deducing based on the laws of physics that I have figured out over here. And there you have it. That's my answer to your good and simple question.